I'm excited to be here with you this morning to talk about change and how change happens. And I'm excited to start by talking about my mom. So this is my mom as homecoming queen. She is awesome. She is smart and funny and kind and talented. She grew up in the 1950s and her dream was to compete in the Miss America pageant as Miss Louisiana. Uh, she won multiple pageants, actually she qualified for the Miss Louisiana pageant, but then she married my dad, so she was no longer eligible. Lucky for me. <laughs> but based on my mom's analysis at that time, Miss America was the most impressive and ambitious thing she could be. Now this is me. At the same ages my mom wanted to compete to be Miss America, I wanted to be a U.S. Senator from Kansas. Um, it's not quite as random as it sounds because I did actually live in Kansas. <laughs> there's just 30 years between my mom and me, but there's immeasurable difference in the opportunities we had in our life and the expectations we had for our lives. It's an extraordinary amount of change. And it's a change in how work gets done, how marriages work, how kids are raised, how we live. It's a fundamental transformational change, a culture change. And like every big social change, this change happened because lots and lots of people decided to believe and act as if something different was possible. Some took big actions like suing for employment discrimination and some smaller actions like playing baseball with your daughter. But this is a room full of people who care about their communities and I suspect most all of you have some change you would like to see. So how do you make it happen? Over the past couple of years, I've done a lot of research on successful social change in the United States, trying to understand what they do right. And we have great examples all around us to inform us and to make us optimistic about what else is possible. I've learned a ton, and I'm just going to share a few reflections this morning. So I consider all these examples to be uh, success stories because they are examples of a group of committed people working hard to successfully make some change happen. But I recognize that people in the room may have different opinions on the changes themselves, uh, which I think is fine because we can learn from change efforts, from successful change, whether we agree with that change or not. So first, recycling. Recycling is a big success story. We've increased our municipal waste recycling rate by 600% since the 1960s. This required a truly dramatic change in how we think about trash. We do things with our trash now that we never would have imagined doing a generation ago. This change required us to believe and act differently. Right? to change what we expected of ourselves and what we expect of others. Most people in this room have been a part of this change. A lot of us are part of this every single day. Right? It's woven into our lives. Every big social change is powered by people. Even when we're talking about institutions and systems, right? we're really just talking about people. Because any time an institution changes its policies, it's because some person or some group of people who are a part of that institution made it happen. And I love recycling as an example of how change is powered by people because a lot of the people who powered this change were actually school children. The change in household recycling all across the US was led by a generation of kids who came home from school fired up to inspire slash guilt their families into recycling those cans. I should note another really important lesson from recycling 
is making change easy on people. Because we can love the earth like crazy, but we are a lot more likely to recycle if there's a bin around. The unit of change in social change is a person. People are both the changers and the changees. The work across the country on marriage equality illustrates this really spectacularly. In a 15-year period, Americans' attitudes about marriage equality flipped from 60% opposing to 60% supporting in 15 years. That is really amazing. Now, of course, there were people working for decades before it changed really fast, but it's still an amazingly fast change in public opinion. This picture is from a newspaper article about the success of door-to-door -door conversations in changing public opinion on marriage equality. This was just one of many tactics involved in the effort, but it's an important one, and I think a revealing one. Because the people who were successful in going door-to-door -door and having these conversations were trained to be respectful, to listen, to ask questions and deep and dig deeper, and not to judge. They didn't ask people to vote a certain way. They didn't ask people to sign a petition just to consider changing their minds. And it worked. If you want to inspire people to believe and act differently, you must empathetically understand how they believe and act now. It requires truly listening and truly understanding people who are different than you. What matters to them? What are their hopes and fears? How can you connect with them? It is usually not the same tactics and messages that appeal to you. It's probably not saying what you've been saying louder. Right? <laughs> it likely requires letting go of some of your assumptions about what should motivate people and testing what will motivate people. Teen pregnancy rates in the US have dropped 60% in the last 20 years. This is a huge success story. This image is from the MTV show 16 and, Pre 16 and Pregnant, which research has shown actually had a measurable impact on teenage pregnancy rates. It showed the real lives of teenage parents, and it made teenagers not want to be <laughs> teenage parents. Okay? It was entertaining. It was real. It was for and about teenagers. All this mattered in how much teenagers watched and connected with the show. Some people can be convinced and motivated by editorials in the newspaper. Some people by protests in the street. Some people by TV shows. Different tactics work for different people. And tactics that work for some people may actually alienate other people. So to get lots and lots of people to believe and act differently requires lots of tactics from lots of different angles. Research shows that people tend to engage with information that affirms their identities and their worldviews and avoid or reject information that conflicts or challenges their identities and their worldviews. And that's all of us by the way. That's not just the explanation for people who disagree with you. We all do this, right? Which is why if we want people to believe and act differently, telling them that they are horrible and should change is not super effective, right? We can learn a lot about what is effective by looking at drunk driving. Drunk driving deaths have dropped by half since 1982. Anybody know what happened in 1982? Mad, that's right, Mothers Against Drunk Driving. So a mom and then a group of moms took this on. And this was a really hard issue to take on. It may seem easy now 
because it happened, right? But imagine being back in 1982 and thinking, how are you gonna, how are you gonna change this? Okay? Success would require changing decision making at the very moment when people are least likely to make a good decision. It's not easy. The mad moms and other advocates used a lot of tactics, like scaring high school kids with crashed cars, right? But I wanna focus on one particular thing they did spectacularly right, and that is friends don't let friends drive drunk. With that message, that framing, they turned what had been a fringe criminal justice issue into an expression of friendship. It was brilliant. Right? We all want to be good friends. We all want to have good friends. So drunk driving matters to all of us. That framing has changed the way millions of us act toward each other and has saved 10,000 lives a year. Successful change efforts include people. They bring people in, they make them care. If you think about the issue that you care most about in the world, and when you talk about that issue, what percentage of the time are you venting? You know, when it's really more about you and your need for catharsis, right? What percentage of the time are you commiserating with or rallying someone who already feels the same way you do? And what percentage of the time are you explaining your view to someone who doesn't share it in a way that's intentional about bridging a divide, bringing someone in? I think that's a metric to watch. This photo is a classic one from the temperance movement, <laughs> which was the movement against alcohol in the US. The first, the first couple hundred years of this country, it was pretty normal for a whole lot of Americans to be pretty drunk pretty much all of the time. And the temperance movement was one of the most successful social change efforts in US history. Over many generations, it deeply changed American culture, and it's the reason why we are not all drunk here today. <laughs> but the temperance movement is a great example of one of the most important lessons in how change happens, and that is this. Real and lasting change is culture change, not policy change. The temperance movement helps make this point because while the movement overall was hugely effective, it had one tactic that spectacularly failed, prohibition. They got the best policy change you could get they got the behavior they wanted, right, for alcohol to be illegal, to be in the Constitution. And it didn't work. The policy went beyond what people actually believed, and so we swung back, we repealed it. They got their dream policy change, but not the culture change to support it. So it wasn't sustainable. I think this is really, really important, and here's why. If you think policy change is the end, if it's the goal, you may be willing to alienate and demonize 49.9% of the people. If you think the end goal is sustainable culture change, you can't. You need as many people as possible to believe and act differently. You don't need everybody. You couldn't possibly get everybody. But you need enough for the change to hold. The way our media and our politics work, it's easy to fall into thinking that change is all about policy. It's changing laws. Right? That's what we hear about and talk about. And when laws change, it can be huge for social change, huge. Policy change is a very, very important means. 
but it's not the end. So I'm from Kansas, remember. In a 15-year period, we had six different sets of science standards. We went back and forth on whether students learned evolution based on what faction had control of the state board. Okay. That is not real and lasting change. Culture wars are about winning. Culture change is about winning over. The movement for African American civil rights in the 1950s and 1960s is the model for so many social change efforts. And when we talk about social change, the image that many Americans have in their head is an image of the civil rights movement like this one. Civil rights leader and congressman John Lewis talks about how all the laws they needed at that time were actually in place. The civil rights movement was about realizing the promise of the laws, changing hearts and minds to fulfill what was already in the Constitution. Now, I think he's overstating it to make a point. I mean, of course, there was still a lot of policy work left to do, and of course, that policy work was critical for creating and securing opportunities for millions of Americans. But what I think he's trying to say what he knew deeply from experience is that laws can only get you part of the way there. The real goal is in how we live them. It's in what we believe and how we act. So care about policy, but care beyond policy. Keep the long game in mind and win people over. The civil rights movement, of course, is also a vivid example of how hard social change can be. I mean, winning people over and then winning more people over and then winning more people over is tiring and it can be especially difficult if you're personally impacted by the issue. And in a lot of cases, it is people who are personally impacted by an issue who will have the passion to do what it takes to lead social change. On issues like medical research and disability advocacy and criminal justice and education reform, you have people essentially having to say, my child is important, or I matter, and that can take a huge toll. Real change is hard, and it usually takes a long time, decades, generations. That doesn't mean you should be patient I mean, change requires impatience, but it does mean you have to be persistent and creative and adaptive and supportive of others and gentle on yourself. I love this photo from our last Bushcon. We are a diverse region. We are a multitude of overlapping and intersecting communities. For us to come together and make any sustainable change in our communities and across the region requires leaders who are great at working across difference. Political difference, economic difference, age difference, cultural difference, racial difference, geographic difference, you name it. Working across difference is our theme for Bushcon this year. We never actually had a theme for Bushcon before. Bushcon is built for sparks and connections and the unexpected, and it's still that. But this year, we put a little more emphasis on programming that encourages us and supports us to get better at working across differences. This is a room full of people with different opinions, different experiences, different vocations, but all of us care about making this region better for everyone. Today at Bushcon is a perfect time and place to practice working across difference, to practice understanding and questioning our own assumptions, to practice truly listening to understand others, to practice 
communicating in ways that bridge differences and build connection. Change happens person by person. Every one of us can be part of a big change by changing what we believe and do or supporting someone else to change what they believe and do. There is so much reason to be optimistic about our communities and our regions and our country's ability to change on virtually any front. We see examples all around us. We live them every day. It's in the different life experiences of a mother and her daughter and then her daughter. Change is always possible. It just takes people, just like us.